Texas is the largest legislature, pardon me, the latest legislature this year to attack the right to vote based on the lie of widespread voter fraud. Last month, Texas Governor Abbott signed SB1 into law. It banned, it banned voting opportunities that made voting more accessible, particularly during the pandemic, such as drive through voting and 24-hour voting options. It increased access for partisan poll watchers. It prohibited local election officials from proactively distributing applications to request mail-in ballots. The legislation also restricts the state's vote-by-mail access, including new ID requirements for absentee voters. These voting restrictions come after voters of color used all of these same options at historic levels in the last election. Now, supporters of the bill, and we've heard it this afternoon in the committee, claim you've got to do it. It's the only way to stop voter fraud. So the Texas Attorney General spent 22,000 hours looking for evidence of fraud. You'd think they really would have made their case. What they found to try to justify SB1 was the following. Only 16 potential cases of fraud out of 17 million registered voters. And you remember what happened in Arizona. 5.7 million spent on the Ninja Turtles who were going through all these ballots and the net result was more votes for Biden, fewer votes for Trump. So this notion of voter fraud is a ruse as far as I'm concerned. Where there is fraud and waste, we should oppose it, whatever party is trying to make an excuse for it. But in this case, there is no basis for it. I would like to ask you to put into perspective for just a moment. We know the discrimination based on voting throughout history. It's a horrible chapter more than one chapter in our nation's uh, history when it comes to civil rights after the Civil War. The question today is, does it take on a different context in light of the big lie, in light of the argument of the previous president that he, in fact, won the last election, though there's no evidence of that, and the attempt to discredit our electoral and voting process? Uh, thank you for the question, Chairman. Uh, the Justice Department believes that elections in our country should be open, fair, and free from fraud. We uh, have observed that claims of fraud are exceedingly rare. Should the Justice Department encounter evidence of fraud, the department stands ready to investigate uh, that fraud. But what the Justice Department has observed is that uh, voting discrimination is widespread. It is a current day problem across our country, in Texas and in many other parts of the country. Uh, the Justice Department spent several years tackling the state's voter ID law. Uh, we know that the state of Texas spent about $3.5 million defending that law. The Justice Department is here to make the case for restoring the preclearance provisions so that we can ensure that elections are free, open, and fair across our country. It seems when you read Shelby County and Bornovich that the argument being made by the Supreme Court is, sure, it was a problem in the old days, but it's just no longer a problem that would require preclearance. And yet you look back not that far in history three-judge panel in 2016 examining a 2013, 2013 North Carolina voting law that required strict voter ID, voter ID and limited early voting. The judges wrote, quote, targeted Amer African Americans with almost surgical pres precision. This was no coincidence, the court found, noting that before enacting the law, the legislature request data on the use by race of a number of voting practices. Upon receipt of the race data, the General Assembly enacted legislation that restricted voting and registration in five different ways, all of which disproportionately affect African Americans. That's eight years ago. And the question I have for you, is there evidence now of what we're seeing in the states of recurrence of this theme? Um, yes, in the department's view, voting discrimination is a current day problem. Uh, the Justice Department has found that Section 2 litigation, which it brought in the states that you referenced, North Carolina and Texas, have proven to be an inadequate substitute for the important protections that had long been provided by Section 5. The advantage with Section 5 is that it blocks these discriminatory laws from ever taking root in our electoral process. While the department had Section 5 in place, uh, the department blocked three thousand discriminatory voting changes, about 60% of them 
uh, having evidence of intentional discrimination. Our hope is that these hearings will lead to a restoration of what has been one of the most important and powerful tools for the department to do its work of safeguarding uh, the right to vote in our country.